Hi, this is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. I thought I would take the opportunity today to show you the anatomy of the Kromsky Double Drive Minstrel Spinning Wheel. Since it's naked, usually I have a bobbin on here. Uh, so um, let's uh, start, well, let's start with the bobbins. Uh, so what you see here uh, is um, this gorgeous wheel, um, and this is a, a double treadle wheel. This are uh, these are the treadles here, and uh, that is how you basically spin the wheel. The uh, next thing I'm going to show you uh, it, this is the flyer here, and this is the bobbin. I'm going to go ahead and take all this off and show you how everything fits together. This is the uh, maiden here, and on the Kromsky, it is leather and it sits in here, and then this comes off under here. There's a screw, you can remove that screw and take this out, and then there's a larger one, and you can get a jumbo flyer, and that can go on uh, to spin either more volume or bulkier yarns. Here, and this is the regular flyer that I have on. I'm gonna remove this so you can see. And the bobbin is on the flyer. I'm going to Remove the whirl, and this is what makes it a double drive wheel. Uh, this whirl attaches, there's some threads here, onto the uh, spindle of the flyer here. And there's uh, this little tab, this is the tensioner, this post, and you can turn this and it will move this up and down. You can see there's a threaded screw, uh, the, well the wood is threaded, and you can thread this and this block will move up and down. I'll show you from a different angle in a second. Uh, but the uh, flyer goes in like that and it just clicks down in there. And the bobbin goes onto the spindle. Uh, so it goes like this. and it should spin freely like it's doing there. Um, I have had on occasion bobbins that something isn't right inside. I don't understand why or what it is, but make sure that it spins freely. Some of them don't spin, even you know, they're handmade. I guess maybe there's something inside, but I have had on occasion bobbins that used to work and now they don't spin anymore. And it's really frustrating to spin with them because it'll tend to like, tug you can feel it's like it's like it pulls and relaxes and pulls and relaxes uh and uh for a long time i thought i was doing something wrong and then i realized that even though the bobbins looked physically the same they didn't spin freely on the spindle like that uh so the uh you will load your bobbin on i uh use mine with the fat end towards the tensioner here uh these will give you the different ratios. So you have, this is one of the whirls. Here is where they store the small whirl on the wheel. And then there's an optional jumbo whirl that you can get. And that controls the speed uh, of the twist. So if you have a short stapled fiber, you might wanna use the smaller of the whirls um, and potentially the small one here. If I was spinning cotton, I'd probably put the small whirl on to here and, uh, and use that. Uh, so now we're just going to put this in and you would take your, your leader here and run it along those hooks. And then it also comes with this orifice hook here. And all you do is just stick that in through the hole. Uh, this is called right here. This is the orifice. Uh, this entire construct here is called the mother of all. Uh, this, uh, I realized I didn't have a good angle on that before. This is the uh, small whirl, and that would be for the uh, short stapled fibers. Uh, the other feature here is uh, they have this uh, onboard lazy kate. It's not really a lazy kate though. You cannot spin or apply or anything from anything that's in front of the orifice. Uh, so this is for bobbin storage. You can look at your pretty singles while you uh, spin the next single. Uh, and then um, the other feature here is this is for a die staff and that would be for spinning flax. 
uh, and uh, it just has a little decorative cap so when you're not uh, using it if you don't have a die staff uh, it looks pretty. So this brings us around to the back side of the wheel and uh, what you see here again this is uh, that uh, tensioner here you can see uh, more clearly there's the threaded screw from uh, this side here uh, just ignore this for the moment I don't have it on uh, but here's that little piece of leather and you can see there's that block so if I turn this let's uh, so if I turn this we should be able to see it actually better from the back you'll be able to see it moving down and up and the block moves so right now see it's going down and then when you go clockwise it's going to tighten it up and that is going to adjust the tension of this which will adjust how strong the pull is how quickly it's going to pull in through the orifice and and um, uh, accumulate onto your body so this is the uh, footman here these are the pedal uh, they, they are attached to the crank and the crank goes through here and comes uh, directly into the wheel here. Crank, just like um, just like pedals on a bicycle. Uh, and so when the wheel spins, when you step on the treadles, the so here are your treadles. When you push on your treadles, the footman will move the cranks, which spin the wheel. which brings us to the next part of the uh, wheel motion, and this is a, a much better view. So a double drive wheel has a band, a single band that's crossed in an X below. The way this wheel works is you have a drive band. This is a poly drive band. Some bands are uh, made out of fiber, uh, like um, uh, cotton or uh, twine other kind of stickier or cotton fiber. Uh, so when you uh, see this, it, it is all one piece. And you can see uh, I set uh, my wheels uh, already assembled. When you assemble the wheel, it's gonna go in here uh, and then you have to measure it to the length you want. And the nice thing about the poly band is, let me find my spot here. Here it is. Uh, there is that little nub there. All you have to do is just heat it up with a, a match or a lighter after you cut it and you just stick it together. And that's all you gotta do. And then it's the right size for you. This is the whirl here. And this is the bobbin. It spins separately from the whirl. The whirl goes around with the flyer and the spindle and this it goes with the bobbin. So the one of the band goes into the notch right here on the whirl. The other one goes onto the bobbin. And then you just bring it around and you stick it on the wheel. It will have a cross in it, it's supposed to. I usually just run my fingers along the wheel and it crosses at the bottom. And now we are set up for this uh, double drive wheel. The whirl and the bobbin together are going to give you your ratio. The ratio is for each revolution of the wheel how many times the flyer goes around. So usually what I do is I would mark the wheel and then I would spin the wheel around and count how many times my flyer goes around and when I get back to the top where my wheel was marked, that's your ratio. One revolution of the wheel to X number of revolutions of the flyer. So you can get a sense here. I'm gonna just pedal with one foot here on my treadle and there's nothing attached to it, but so you can get a sense though for how the wheel moves with that double drive. It's very smooth. I absolutely adore my double drive wheel. The other way that you can set up this particular wheel is as a scotch tension or a single drive. And what that is, is this is the scotch tension peg right here. There is some uh, cordage around this and there is a spring on this side of that. And there is an eye hook over here. So it will come through here. Now all of this is slack. Before I, I wasn't showing it because I had a bobbin on here and I didn't want to undo it. 
but I can loosen this up, take the tension off. So if I wanted to set this up for a single drive wheel, I am going to use this uh, set up here with the whirl and the bobbin. And then I'm going to bring that uh, twine and I'm gonna put it on the bobbin, the ridge in the bobbin. Uh, let me get that going for you. So to set this up as a single drive, uh, you would uh, just have the poly band on here. Uh, well, I'll just pretend here. You would just put, it would be a single band. I guess you could in theory just have these two on here, but you would only have the band around the wheel and the whirl of your choice. And then the bobbin, let me come around here. I think you'll have a better view of it this way. Uh, the, the bobbin will have the twine from the scotch tension. So this will be slacked, this will lift up, and you'll have to put that over here. The uh, only way to really do that would be to take this off first. Would be to take this off uh, and, and then put the scotch tension over it, put it onto the bobbin, and then you would insert it here and then put one band only around one band only around the whirl, and then you would adjust the tension through here, and that would be the scotch tension. If you've made it this far and you've learned something, please remember to like and subscribe. This is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. See you soon.